Hello everybody, what's up? My name is Jack Cat 45 Sorry, uh, the first two seconds had no audio because I totally forgot that I was re recording. I was like, has it started? Yes, it has. Anyways, yeah. So, sorry this video is a week late, um, and why you didn't get a video last week was because on this phone, you had to press the but record button and then start recording. While on my old phone, it was just you press the record button and it already started recording. Um, so I may or may not have not recorded the video and thought I did. So when, when I went to go upload it, I was looking for the video and could not find it. And then I realized, oh, I didn't actually record the video and then didn't have time to record it until now. So, or re-record it. I get to, well, I technically never record it in the first place. So yeah, this one you have to press it twice um, and on my new phone, while well, my old phone was once, so I only pressed it once thinking I was recording, and I wasn't. So anyways, that's why this video is late, but now onto the thing. Also, you like that? It's like getting blurry in the background. This this phone's like way better at auto-focusing, so hopefully I won't have to like manually focus every few seconds, but... Uh, here we are with the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube comparison. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll just get into it since I kind of already wasted some time. Let me get a more in the middle, I guess. Yeah, right. yeah. So anyways, here we go. So I'll take the uh, this out real quick. There it goes. Um, so as you can see, they both have four controller ports, so you can still play with four people, which is very nice. Um, which is actually pretty much still today's standards unless you're playing online, but locally you're still playing with uh, four, which is actually really cool. Um, basically, other than that, there's not a ton else on the front. Uh, you got your power indicator, so you know if your system is on, um, but you probably know it's on anyways because you turned it on. Um, as long with this Nintendo 64 logo, while there isn't the power indicator or a logo here on the front of the GameCube, but there is slot A and slot B, which are for memory cards, which the memory cards on the GameCube look like this. Um, they just say Nintendo GameCube. I believe they do have stickers there and on the back here. Mine doesn't. I think the previous owner of this um, peeled them off. Which kind of does give it a sleek gray look, I guess. Especially on the front, because there's not like a random barcode. Um, but yeah, so I think they are supposed to have stickers. Um, and then this one here says 8 megabytes, I believe. I'm not sure why they put the B as lowercase, but they did. Um, and this is an Intec. Uh, uh, that's an Intec uh, memory card, which is uh, unofficial, obviously. Because it isn't made by uh, Nintendo. But yeah, as you can see, it sticks out a lot farther th out than this. So, yeah. I'm not entirely sure how much this one holds. Oh, I dropped it, so I guess we'll never know. Um, doesn't really say. Made in Japan? Uh, memory card 59. I don't know what that means. But it's uh, memory card 59. So, if you know what that means... Uh, go ahead and move that down in the comments. I'm assuming it's like what kind of picture you have on it, because like I said, there's stickers on them normally. But anyways, we go to the side, since we're kind of done with the bottom, or the front. Wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> we kind of have like this little vent here, which I believe is for heat. Um, let air in and out, so it doesn't get too hot. Um, along with, um, the GameCube, a fan, so they both kind of got like intakes, or outtakes, whatever. I don't really know yet. On the back, however, we have, uh, they both have the same input method, uh, the same cord, so it will work out on both. However, completely different power adapters. For this one, as you can see, there's a big cut cutout on the back here, and that is for the brick, the, uh, power brick for this one. The brick is actually, like, plugs into the com the uh, N64, and then the rest of it's just like a normal cord. Well, this one is more like a laptop one, where it's cord, and then it hits this big brick, and then it's cord again. Um, so this is, m so it's slightly different executions for essentially the exact same thing. 
And then pretty much the same thing on the other sides. It's just another vent, and then this is where hot air comes out since the fan's on the other side. Well, hmm. Because fan, would it suck it in or out? I don't know. I have to look. I don't know. It's kind of either way, I think, really. And so, yeah. Now, we shall take a look at the tops, which we'll look at the top of the N64 first. And then we'll be able to play GameCube. So here, on the N64, we have uh, a few things, not super, like, you know, crazy stuff. This one, uh, as you can see, has this little thing here, which is where your cartridges go into. So you can put your cartridges in it, um, and then you're good to play, which is pretty cool. So, note that this takes cartridges, because we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then, as you can see, there's another, like, kind of vent thingy there. Um, and then down here, you have your reset button, along with your power slider, I guess. It's not really a button, because it slides, but that's how you turn the console on and off. Man, what a sneeze. <coughs> really glad I left that in, because that was five sneezes in a row. Uh, so I'm sorry, that's really unprofessional of me. Not that I'm getting paid for this yet. Um, <laughs> and then here's the memory expansion, which doesn't really expand the memory. Or does it? I don't know. What I, what I do know is that it makes this thing slightly more powerful. And, um, so on some games, it will let you, uh, play at a slightly higher, uh, with some slightly higher graphics, while other games, you need this to play them. So, like, Donkey Kong 64, you need this to play. Uh, if you don't have a memory expansion in your N64, and you put Donkey Kong 64 in, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. That's pretty much it for the top of the N64. Now the GameCube... Here's the top of the GameCube, which has uh, a power button, um, which is actually a button this time, a reset button, um, and then here's the light that shows that the GameCube is on or not, and we also have this open button, which opens the top tray up to reveal a disc. However, it's a very tiny disc. I don't have an actual disc size with me right now to compare to, but uh, this it's pretty small disc, so... From the N64 to the GameCube, we've jumped up to uh, discs now, which is pretty cool. Smaller discs, so they couldn't really hold that much information. But we did jump up to discs, and then, of course, ironically, we've switched back to uh, cartridges with the Nintendo Switch. But obviously, we're not quite there yet on my good old console reviews yet. And so, there you go. That's kind of the main differences between the two, is really just performance and then what type type of cartridge you use uses. Since we're here on the GameCube, we'll take a look at the underside of the GameCube to reveal uh, some extra ports at the bottom, which unlike the NES and the Super NES, actually served uh, some purpose. So if we open this up, we got a port there um, along with a port down here. And another port here. Oh, just kidding. There's not a port there. Uh, some versions of the GameCube do have another port here. I believe my Indigo GameCube, which is kind of like a purpley blue color, um, does have it. Is also that Indigo GameCube I have has another port to the TV, so it's got two different ones you can use. Um, so the models actually are different in case you were wondering they're not all made the same believe it or not Which I think is kind of interesting um, But yeah, so like I said these ports actually serve a function unlike the N6 or the NES and the N the NES and the Super NES because uh, They just they had ports at the bottom because they were originally supposed to get stuff But then never ended up getting things this, you can use the uh, Game Boy Player, which allowed you to play Game Boy Advance games on your TV. Or, uh, was it the Game Boy Player? I feel like the Game Boy Player was the thing for the Super Nintendo, but I could be wrong. But yeah, so that, these actually serve the purpose. Um, and 
I don't think that the port that is wouldn't occasionally be here, depending on which model GameCube you have. I don't know if that actually ever served a purpose or not, but uh, it was there. And so there you have it. There's the bottom of the GameCube. So we'll move to uh, the N64, which is really just has this, which is a port here. That was only used in Japan, and that was for the uh, N64 DD, which, if you don't know what that is, is basically in a um, expansion that you put on the bottom of your N64, like the Game Boy or the Game, yeah, the Game Boy Player on the GameCube. Um, that basically, as it's DD stands for, uh, oh, what is it? Discs. Some okay, something something to do with discs. But basically, it used floppy disks, um, and it would get you some games, or like expansion to games. Um, so you can look that the, those videos up. Um, World of Nintendo did uh, some good videos on those, so uh, check him out if you want to check out more of the N64DD. 